I'm back with five more incredible utility-based React hooks that you can use in any project you build. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in this video, I'm gonna be covering five simple React hooks that are incredibly versatile. And we're actually gonna be starting with number six on this list because I already covered the first five in another video, so I highly recommend you check that out after this video. And this first hook that I wanna talk about is called use previous. And this hook is great if you need to store the previous value of some piece of state and access it for some reason. So right here, we have our component, which we're rendering out to our screen. Inside this app.js, we're just rendering out this previous component. This previous component has a count variable, which is just a normal React state. We have a name, which is also a normal React state. And then we're using previous and we're passing in our count. And this hook is just going to save the previous value of our count variable. And here you can see we're putting our count first and then our previous count second. So our count starts at zero and we currently have no previous count yet. Then we're printing out the name. We have a button that increments our count and then we have a button that changes the state for our name. And the important thing about this button down here is it shows you that even if we change the name variable, it doesn't impact our previous count. So if we increment this, you can see now our new count is one, our previous count is zero and it works all the way. And if I change our name, you can see it doesn't actually impact the previous count at all. So how does this hook work? If we open up use previous, you can see it takes in a value and it's just getting a reference to that value. So we're getting a current reference and a previous reference. The current reference is going to be set to the current value and the previous reference here is just going to be set to nothing. And then what I wanna do is I wanna say, hey, does the value we have saved that is the current value, is it different than the value that's being passed into use previous? If that's the case, then that means that the value here has changed, so our count has changed. So if it's changed, then what I wanna do is I wanna take our previous value and set it to what our old current value is, because the old current value is now the previous value, and now I wanna set our new current value here to the actual real value. So all this hook really does is it saves what the value is and it saves what the value used to be. And then anytime this value changes, we're just updating those variables and then we're always returning the previous value. So that way only when the value changes are we actually updating it. Now this hook is great if all you need is the previous value, but sometimes you need to be able to go backwards and forward, undo, redo different pieces of history. And that's where this next hook called use state with history comes in. So let me just open this up real quick. And inside of our app, we just wanna make sure we comment in that state with history component. And now what we have here is a state with history component. I'm gonna kind of go over it real quickly and then I'm gonna go over the actual working version of it. So as you can see up here, we're just using state with history and we're passing in the value of one. And that gives us count and set count, just like a normal state would work. And then we have this other variable we returned, which is everything to do with the history. So history is an array of all the values that this thing has ever been. We have a pointer, which is like where in our history we currently are. We have a back button, a forward button, and then a go function. These functions just allow us to go backward, forward, or to a specific point in history. And then we also have this name here to, again, show you that changing the name doesn't break our history. So the first thing I print out is our count. So at the top of our screen, our count is one. And then I'm printing out our history array. So right now our history is just the value of one because that's what it currently is. Then we have a pointer, which is the index in the array that we're currently at, which is index zero. We have the name. And then we just have a bunch of buttons down here that do all the different things we want to do. So we can double our count or we can increment. So if I click increment, you can see that our now current state is two and our history goes one, two, and our pointer is pointing at the value one with the index one. So it's pointing at the top here. And we can like double here a couple times. Maybe we'll do a few increments and a few doubles. Now, as you can see, we have this huge array of all the different pieces of history and we have a pointer pointing to where we are in that. And we just have the current count right here. Now, if I wanted to go backward, you can see when I click back, the only thing that changes is the pointer and the current value, but our array of history still stays the same. So I can go all the way back to the very beginning, or I can go all the way forward to the very end. And as you can see, that works just fine. And if I go backward and then I change our state, you can see it cuts off everything ahead of that state and it restarts our state at that point. So if I go backward here to index two, where our value is four and I click increment, you can see everything after four gets deleted and it gets replaced with five. Also, I can go to a specific index, so I can go to index two, and as you can see, we get the value four. If I change the name, it doesn't affect anything. So to show you how that hook works, you're gonna see that there's actually quite a bit of code inside of here, but overall, there's really only one thing that matters, which is this set function right here. So the first thing that this hook does is it takes in a default value, this is just the starting value, and then it can take in an optional capacity, which by default is 10. So we can store at most 10 things inside of our state. And then we're just saving our state with that default value, so that's just normal set state stuff. And then we have a reference to our history array and a reference to the pointer in that array where we currently are. And by default, we're gonna have an array with one value and we're at that first index. So this is the set function. This is the function that we pass down here as the set, like set state. 
but we actually changed the set state function a lot. First of all, it's a callback and we're going to be passing in a value. And if we go over into here, you can see the set count. We want it to work exactly the same as a normal state set. So we need to check, hey, is this a function? If so, we need to pass it the current value. Otherwise, we just use the value passed in, just like you could do with set state. And then what we're doing is we're saying, hey, we need to check if the thing at the end of our history is not the same as this value. We're just saying, is the thing we're currently pointed at different? Just like we did when we were working with use previous, so we said, hey, has this changed? That's what this line does right here. It says, hey, has this thing changed? If so, then what we want to do is we want to delete everything after our pointer. That's because if we go back a ways and we change something, we want to delete all the state that no longer is applicable. So this right here just deletes all the state we no longer need. Then it adds the new state to the end of the array. And right here, we're just making sure if we're beyond the capacity. So if I just double this a bunch of times, you can see after a while, if I just keep clicking double, that it's going to only allow 10 values to be shown on the screen. So this just makes sure it cuts off at the capacity. And then finally, we're resetting our pointer to point to the correct index, just the end of our array, essentially. And then we're just calling set value, which is the normal set state that we're going to be doing. So this is just kind of wrapping set state and calling it at the end here. And then finally, we have the back, forward, and go functions. And all these do is just say, hey, make our pointer go backwards one and reset our value, make our pointer go forward and set the value, and here, set our pointer to the exact value and then set the value here. So those are pretty straightforward functions. The most of the code all happens inside this set right here. Now, this is the perfect hook for things like undo and redo, but what happens if you actually wanna save state long-term? Well, that's where this next hook, use storage, is gonna come in. So let me just exit out of all of this code here. I'm gonna open up this use storage hook, I'm gonna get our component and our hook, and we're gonna render out the component to the screen. As you can see, this component is pretty straightforward. We can set the name, set the age, remove the name, and remove the age. And inside of our component, you can see we have a name, a set name, and a remove name, same thing with age. And we're using session storage, and we're using local storage. And as you'll notice, this code is very similar to use state. The only difference is we're passing in a key here along with the value, and we get this remove function instead of just the set function. And down here, we're just calling those different functions. Pretty straightforward section. So in our use storage code, you can see we have our use session storage and our use local storage. And all they're doing is calling this use storage hook that we've created, passing it the key and the default value, which come from here. And then we're passing it in either local storage or session storage. And that's because local storage and session storage work exactly the same. So this just makes the code a little bit simpler overall to work with since we don't need to copy it twice. Now inside this use storage hook, what we're doing is we're setting our state. And by default, what we're gonna do is try to access the state inside of either session or local storage based on this storage object. So we access to see if this thing exists. If it does, then we're going to return that as our value. Otherwise, if nothing exists yet, then we're going to use this default value. And again, we're just checking to make sure it's a function or not because we want this to work just like normal set state. Then down here, we have a use effect. And this use effect is just running anytime our key, our value, or our storage object changes. But really the main thing is whenever our value itself changes. If our value changes and it's not undefined, then what we want to do is just set our item inside of local storage or session storage, depending on what their storage object is. Otherwise, if our value is undefined, we want to remove it from that storage object. And then we have a remove function here, which all it does is set our value to undefined to remove it for us. If I just come in here and I do a quick inspect, drag this over, go over to the application tab, you'll see inside local storage, we have our age. And inside session storage, we're going to have our name. And if I say set name to John, you'll see it changes inside of session storage. And in local storage, if I set our age, which it's already set, but if I delete it from here, refresh, you'll see it defaults to 26. And when I set it to 40, you'll see it's saved. And when I refresh our page, you'll see that that persists, that data persists because it's inside of our local storage. But if I remove age, you can see it's now gone. Same thing with session. I can remove the name and now it is gone. This is a hook that I use literally all the time in all of my different projects because I'm always needing to save things in local or session storage based on different use cases. And being able to use just a simple hook like use local storage is so much nicer than writing out all of this code every single time. Now the next hook I wanna talk about is one that is really good for building out other hooks and that's this async hook. So let me just come in here and we're gonna comment out this async component here and we're gonna open up the code for use async which has a component and a function. And inside the component, all we're doing is calling use async and that allows us to get a loading variable, an error variable and a value variable. Think about when you need to fetch data from a URL or you need to do anything else that's loading on your page like a long running task. Anytime that you have a promise that you need to run, you can use this use async hook and you pass it a function which returns a promise, that's important. So this function always returns a promise and then it's going to be loading while the promise is running. It's going to give us an error if we reject or it's gonna give a value if we resolve. And down here, I'm just saying loading and I'm just printing out whether or not we're loading and then I'm printing the error or I'm printing the value. 
as you can see here right now we have success set to true and we have a set timeout so after one second it's just going to resolve high if it was successful or it's going to reject error so if i refresh the page you'll see it says loading true after one second loading is set to false and the value is high if i change success here to false you can see loading is true and then after one second it gives us error so that's working just like we would expect because we're getting the error value instead of the actual value so inside of usa sync this is actually a really straightforward hook we're just got three states for loading error and value and then we have essentially our callback and down here we're calling our callback anytime that the callback function changes and this callback function takes a list of dependencies which by default there are no dependencies so it's never going to change but if for example we wanted to update this based on different things so like we had a count and every time our count changed we wanted to call this we could pass in dependencies here to make sure we recall this async hook every single time something changes in our case we aren't using that but you'll see later in the video we're going to use an example of that now this callback memoized is essentially the main bulk of all the code you can see every time that we call this function we're setting loading to true and we're deleting our error and our value then we're calling our callback and whenever it's successful we set the value if it's an error we set the error and then finally at the end we make sure we set loading to false so it's just very basic running a promise and keeping track of loading error and value for us super straightforward and where a great use case for this is instead of doing fetch which is where our next hook comes in handy so let's open up our use fetch hook here get all of this open and we're going to uncomment that out now we can see we have a fetch component and a use fetch hook and if I just refresh over here, you can see it's loading the information and my internet is pretty fast. So it's loading almost instantaneously. So let's just come in here and make sure we slow down our internet speed. So we'll just come in and we'll throttle this to fast 3G. So now when I refresh, it's going to take much longer. And as soon as this pops up, you'll see it'll say loading true. And then after a while loading false, and it's going to print out the information for us right here. And when we change our ID, you can see it's loading a new user every single time. So I talked about that different dependency array. This is using that dependency array. So let's bring us back to no throttling and we can see our code right here. We just have an ID and every time our ID changes, we're running this use fetch hook, which has this URL being passed to it, which has the ID. And then we have another second options being passed to it, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And then down here, we just have the code to print out the ID and the buttons as well as the loading information. So this use fetch hook looks just like use async. The results are the same, but we're passing it a URL instead, this mysterious second object and then dependencies. So in use fetch, you see we'll have our URL we have our options and we have our dependencies. This options is just the options you would pass to the fetch function. So fetch takes a URL and it takes a list of options. And the only option we default is the header for JSON because 99% of the time you're fetching information, you're using JSON. So we just defaulted that. And then otherwise we're just using that use async hook and we're just catching our promise on the first dot then. We're saying if it was a successful response, return the JSON. Otherwise, if it was an error, make sure you just change the JSON to an error so we reject the promise. This is just because by default, fetch never ever really fails, even if you have a failed request. So we wanna make sure we actually fail this if the request was a failure. And that's all there is to this use fetch hook. Since we did all of the coding in use async, it made this use fetch hook really simple to write. And it's super nice because I can just write this one single, really small little line of code here. And now every time I change my ID, it's getting a brand new user for me. And there are five more incredible React hooks you can use in any project. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out part one. It's going to be linked over here. And let me know if there's any other React hooks you think I should include in future videos. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.